Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Creepy Basement, aka the Axe Workshop. So today I'm going to be hanging this head on this handle. I have everything already fit up, ready to go, because today's main objective is to talk about what I mean when I say tune the wedge for the hang. Um, I've said this in plenty of other videos. I'm like, all right guys, now I'm gonna tune the wedge for the hang. I do my thing, next thing you know, I'm pounding the wedge in. And then I have people reach out to me and say, well, what do you mean when you say tune the wedge for the hang. So I apologize for maybe not answering that well in, in videos or maybe not showing it enough. And it's really kind of hard for me to articulate what I mean in an email or in the comments. So I figured today I'll show you guys uh, just what I mean when I say tune the wedge for the hang. And then I also want to give a couple tips on, you know, seating the wedge because I've had people reach out in the past too saying that, you know, they're trying to beat the wedge in and it's bouncing back out or they snap it or it cracks or this or that. And we'll kind of talk about how serious some of those things are and how not so serious some of those things are and how important is it to tune the wedge for the hang or is it more for aesthetics so stick around through the whole thing i'm hopefully going to keep this uh you know concise and to the point but you know if you're a frequent flyer here at 940 joey you know that i could turn a five minute discussion into 20 minutes pretty quick but i'm going to do my best to keep it uh to the point that way you guys can learn something and you don't get too bored. So stick around, I'm gonna grab a couple of supplies and we're gonna get right into it. Alrighty, so really the first step in tuning your wedge for the hang is going to be determining how much material you have to remove this way. So here you have your wedge like that. You're gonna take material off this way to make it fit in the opening of the eye. So this isn't the head we're hanging, but this is just for an example, because on that head, we got kind of lucky here and I'll show you why in a second. So you have a boy's ax here, right? You lay your wedge on there because we can see our wedge doesn't fit in the eye opening. So we're gonna lay the wedge on top of the eye here and we're gonna make a mark with our pencil. We're gonna make sure it's touching the back of the eye and we're gonna make a little mark here. Okay, and now we can see that we need to take about a quarter inch off of the wedge this way so it could sit into the eye so how you would do that you could sit there with sandpaper and rub away at this and that's fine you could do that but it's it takes a little bit to take a quarter inch off of this so you want to just take some kind of saw it doesn't have to be this saw it could be any saw you have and you're going to whack that quarter inch off now i will say this is pretty important um, don't overlook this. And if you do, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. It's a learning experience, but you don't want to take so much material off to where this wedge just boop, falls right through the eye. That's not what we want. So what we have here, this eye happens to be kind of long compared to like that boy's ax. Um, and this actually does fit if I force it pretty snug, but see how it won't fall through. Even if I push it, it's, it's stuck right there. That's kind of where you want to end up. If you are taking material off of here, you don't want it to fall right through because in the next step, um, we're going to be removing a little more material. So you want to give yourself, you know, a little extra meat there. You want it to be able to, you know, go into the eye a little bit, but not fall right through. Because like I said, we are going to be removing more material and why that's important. Because like I said, I'm aiming this more towards the newer guy hanging an ax or girl hanging an ax. Um, if you went out to the hardware store, let's say, and bought a handle and you only have one wedge and you take too much material off, well, now you don't have a wedge. I have a pile of wedges. If I mess this one up, I'll put it aside and I'll hang on to it for a smaller eyed ax and it will eventually get used. But if you only have one wedge, it's, it's important that you don't take too much material off. And I'm going to be doing all this work on a belt sander, which is why if you're very new to it, I do recommend using just a piece of sandpaper to remove material, maybe sandpaper in a file because when working with a belt sander, especially on a fresh belt, it's gonna remove wood very quickly. And if you're not really paying attention to what you're doing and you take too much wood, you can't put any back. So when I first started doing this, I started on a piece of sandpaper. I eventually got a belt sander. And even then I took a little bit and I checked, took a little bit and I checked. And that's all gonna make sense in the next step here. I'll bring you guys over to the belt sander and I'll show you really what it means to tune the wedge to the hang. So. Now we have our wedge the correct width to where it fits into the eye. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, which you probably do, the ax eye is a teardrop. The wooden wedge is a rectangle. 
So we're gonna contour this wedge to where it fit, fits pretty perfectly inside that eye and it, and it has the same shape as the back and the front of the eye. So it fits in there just ever so perfectly. So, all right, I'm gonna quit rambling. We're gonna go over to the belt sander here. Like I said, guys, I'm real good at turning the five minute discussion into 20 minutes fast. So we're gonna go over to the belt sander, uh, get her plugged in, and I'm gonna show you just how we, we shape up the eye. All right, so the first thing I like to work on is the front portion. I like to work on the front portion of the eye because this is a much wider radius, so it's easier to fit that. So um, pretty much we end up just knocking the corners off for the back and slightly rounding it. But the front, we're gonna have to taper this, but we don't wanna make it too thin to where the front portion of the hang is loose, you know what I mean? Because, well, you'll, you'll see later on, but we're gonna, we're gonna take care of this front portion. guys that's it that's easy look at that now make sure this is in frame now now it falls through i'm like screaming into the speaker i'm sorry all right but you see what i mean it falls through now now you see why it was so important that we didn't do that initially because we lost so much material now if we made it too short in the beginning it would be way too short we would have a lot of play forward and back but now you could see if I hold the bottom of the wedge I don't know if that's there but it fits perfectly inside the eye. Something I didn't mention earlier which is actually super important when it comes to wedging is the kerf. The kerf is the slot that's cut into the handle where the wedge goes so the kerf the depth of that kerf should be two-thirds the distance of the axe head so <clears throat> what <clears throat> excuse me what you do to determine that is take a measurement you could eyeball it that's fine you can mark it with a pencil but we'll do it the measurement way so now this is a jersey style head this is this causes confusion actually believe it or not um <clears throat> to a lot of new axe users where would you measure from on this axe head right we're going to measure this distance here because that's that's where the wedge is going we're not measuring from here to here. That doesn't make sense. We're gonna measure from here to here. But where does the head end? At the lug? No. The head ends here, okay? So when we're measuring for our kerf depth, if we measured from the lugs, which a lot of new people do when they hang their first jersey, and next thing you know, if you measure it from the lugs, well, if you hung straight edge across this, right? That would mean that our kerf extends the bottom of our head and we don't want the kerf to extend the bottom of our head. We want it two thirds the distance of the head. So if you're doing a jersey, go to your shortest distance, pretty much halfway through this lug. You could see the opening here and that's three inches. So two thirds the distance of that is two inches. So I cut my kerf two inches down. That's if this was a little flush. So I may have to go a little deeper with my kerf because I did remove more material. I like to hang my head um, down closer to the, to the shoulder more. Um, so I'll, I'll recheck that. I'm pretty sure I did, but now I can't remember. But either way, you want that two thirds the distance of the ax head, guys. And like I said, not to repeat myself, but I'm going to, if you are hanging a jersey, you don't wanna measure from the lug. Measure from where the head actually ends because if you measure from the lug and if I cut my, this would make it three and a half inches. If I cut my turf to the lug, then out when this is sitting on the handle here, right? That would mean that my kerf is, is that frame is extending a half inch because it's flush now with the lug. It would be extending half inch out the bottom of the eye, and we don't want that. So something to keep in mind there, guys. You want your kerf two thirds the distance of the head. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna do my final fit with my head, or I'm gonna seat the head on the handle. I'm pretty sure I have my kerf the correct distance. Um, I'll determine that in a second. I think I do. Let me just, just check here. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. I didn't see it, but I, I remember where it, where it stopped. I made a mark on my handle. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get that head seated on the handle, and then there's one more step to determine if this is going to fit perfectly or not, 
And this is gonna answer the question to the folks that reached out to me and said, I'm trying to pound the wedge in and it keeps bouncing out as I'm hitting it in. All right. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this too, guys. If you want, put your wedge, measure it up against your kerf here. So you know where the bottom of your kerf is, right? And then just make a rough mark here on your wedge. So you could see about where the end of your wedge is. So when you're hammering the wedge down into the eye, you could see you have a, a reference line. So you know when you're seated, if you're not used to that sound. All right, so I got the head on the handle here. And you could even check when once the head's on, you could put make this flush with the um, top of the eye, like you have your reference mark. You can make it flush with the top of the handle here. And if I make my mark flush, you can see I'm about two thirds the distance. So here's the bottom of the head where the head ends. Remember, not the lug, where the head actually ends, where the eye ends. If I make my reference mark up there, that's about two thirds the distance. I'm very happy with where that's at. And I know that's where my, my kerf ends. So again, guys, it, it would take two seconds to pop this head off if it was wrong. It doesn't hurt to double and triple check your work because in the end, it's going to be a way better outcome and like i always say if you have the time to do it twice you have enough time to do it right the first time so just make sure you take a couple extra steps and you know five extra minutes to make sure you do it right the first time uh, so you don't have to do it again so all right now this this is the last part in tuning up the wedge okay so what, what's the purpose of the wedge we're wedging we're sending a wedge in here to fill the gap that's there and to put compression on the tongue or the eyewood here up against the head, right? We're, we're, it's, it's a compression fit. We're wedging it, we're flaring this wood out, it's making compression and making contact inside the eye. And if you leave it proud like I do, which I'll explain that at the, at the end when we get there, you're, you're mushrooming over the top a little bit, okay? It's all about compression and having a tight fit. So you're like, all right, well, then we want a really fat wedge. Well, that's not true either, because if you have a really fat wedge, if it's not tuned for the hang, I know I keep repeating that, but that's why I say it like that. You got to tune it for the hang. Everyone's going to be different. If I took a little too much material here and I had a bigger gap to fill, I'd probably want a little fatter of a wedge. But what, what are we trying to fill? We have this gap here, which we could say that that's a good eighth. Okay. We have a little gap here and a little gap here. And then we're also gonna to have to account for some compression. Um, and if you have a poplar wedge, it will compress a lot more than oak. This is oak, this isn't gonna compress much. This is pretty close to the density of hickory. So I'm not gonna get much compression out of the wedge. I'm probably gonna get more compression out of the hickory, the I would here. So if you have poplar, you're gonna compress the wedge. Um, you're still going to compress the eye wood. It's just natural. That's what's going to happen, but you're going to actually end up compressing your wedge a little more. Um, also too, poplar is probably going to break a lot easier if it's too tight and you hit it weird and it's going to, it's going to snap. That's not to say that, you know, for instance, black oak or what's that called? Black, black walnut. Not, I, I have red oak. Black walnut. It's a very hard wood but it's very brittle because it's so hard, where if you hit it wrong, that it just like shatters. So this is a little more resilient. It's a little more fibrous and stringy, so it takes the abuse a little better. It's not as soft as popular where it would just kind of crumble, but it won't shatter like, like black walnut. I really like red oak wedges and white oak wedges. Anyway, I'm getting carried on here. So we're trying to fill three gaps here and not that that determines exactly how thick we're going to make it, but this is about the correct taper. Now, let's say I had a really fat, chunky wedge, right? It just, man, it just really flares out. You know what I mean? It just, the taper is just, wow, just drastic. It's just a big, beefy triangle. Well, if you tried forcing that big, beefy triangle down into here, what's going to happen is it's going to, you know, it's going to be pushing the wood out, but then this is going to have resistance back on the wedge. And what happens is, is as you hit it down, it can't travel down because it's so gosh darn fat like that. It's gonna actually pop the wedge back out. Boom, boom, boom. So we wanna look, do we have a nice gradual taper? Yes, we all wanna sink a fat wedge in there to make it really tight, but it doesn't have to necessarily be 
so fat that it has the adverse effect. You won't be able to wedge the ax because it'll keep trying to pop out as you're wedging it. Or if you do get it in there, you know, maybe the first swing or two, it'll, it'll pop out. But now we want to check our taper. So just from experience, I can pretty much see that this is going to work. Okay. But let's say we had this extremely tight and it's actually pinching our, our kerf closed. Like sometimes when you seat the head, you have it so tight that it pinches this closed. Well, there's a couple things you could do there. You can go to your sander or your piece of sandpaper and you can make this taper much more gradual. You can make the wedge thinner, make it, make it, you know, instead of it being a quarter inch on top, maybe make it like three sixteenths and make the gra the taper from the end to this end much, much of a gradual slighter taper, might a smaller angle, okay? So it's less of a wedge. Or you could take your head back off and you could remove a little more material on the eye so that there's not so much resistance, which there's a fine line because you want resistance. You want it to be a tight hang before you even get the wedge there. Um, Cause you know, you want a good friction fit. You want the, or, you know, I guess friction, but you want, you want to make contact with the, the eye wood to the eye of the ax. So I hope I'm explaining that correctly or well enough for you guys to understand. But if this is too fat, right? You have a big, wide, beefy wedge and you're trying to bring it into a, a small slot and you have so much resistance that it's actually going to reject it, okay? The, the wood is gonna be pushing up against this. You're gonna be hammering it down and it's gonna keep jumping back up. Well, don't keep hitting it. Assess the situation and be like, okay, what's going on here? Is this too fat? Is that too tight? Where do we need to adjust? So what you could, like I, do, like I said, what you could do is you could taper this out more, make it a lot thinner, or you could remove more wood here. Maybe you have it too tight. Maybe you're beating the hell out of it just to get it to this point and you have your kerf pinch shut. At that point, I would take the head back off, work on that eye wood a little more, but don't make it too sloppy to where it just falls on because even still, if you have too fat of a wedge, you are still putting it into a straight slot and it's gonna reject the wedge. So make sure all your fitment is good. It looks like this taper is pretty good and I should be able to fit this in um, with no problem. So now we're gonna go on to the final step before we send this wedge in and finish this hang. All right, so the last step, like I said, we determined that this is probably a good enough taper. So now what is your gonna what is gonna be your medium that you're gonna put on this wedge to help in driving the wedge in? You could do it dry, okay? I've said this in other videos before, take it how you like. No one likes doing it dry. Let's just be honest. But there are people out there that do it dry. But you, you wanna put some kind of medium on here uh, to help the wedge drive in there so you don't have as much friction and it's not fighting you to get in. What I use is I use linseed oil, okay? Just like I use on my handles, I put it on the wedge and it definitely helps with driving the wedge home because it's it's slippery, because um, it's an oil, but also too, it gives me peace of mind because this is a piece of wood, unlike the rest of the handle, it's never gonna see linseed oil. So this is my one shot to get linseed oil on here. So not everyone does that. Some people use wood glue so that the wedge doesn't back out or whatever, but I don't like using wood glue. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to use wood glue, it's a good medium. It helps it slip in there. And obviously it's glue, so it's gonna dry and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be permanent until the head, you know, eventually loosens up. Like it's inevitable the head is gonna loosen just from humidity change, moisture, whatever, it, it's gonna end up loosening up. And then that's why I don't use wood glue. Because one, if I make a mistake right now and I have to extract this wedge, I can, because it's just linseed oil. Nothing, there's no bonding agent holding this wedge in other than compression, so I could still remove it, okay? If the wood glue is still wet, yeah, of course you could remove it, but then you gotta clean all the wood, wood glue out of the kerf before that dries. Obviously you have some time to do that, but it's just, it's more crap to deal with. Um, also, let's say I go swing this ax tomorrow and my wedge starts backing out or my head loosens up immediately and I have to go back to the drawing board and, and make something tighter. I can extract it. The, the, the oil isn't gonna set like glue. I'll be able to take this wedge out again. So I like having the ability to extract the wedge if I need to, or if the head loosens up in the future and I'm reseating it, 
I'm not trying to drill out a wedge that's been wood glued in place. You know what I mean? It just, it saves me later. So you do what you want to do. If you want to use wood glue, that's fine. I know plenty of guys out there using wood glue. They love it. They have no issues with it. Um, but like I said, me personally, I like using linseed oil. I like to have that ability, whether it's right now, tomorrow, or in six months, I know I can extract this wedge and reseat the head if needs be. So now all I do is I take my linseed oil, put it on the wedge. And now remember guys, this is something else I forgot to mention because I keep rambling about nonsense. Remember our wedge is tuned up and directional now. We tapered the front portion of the eye and we tapered the back portion of the eye and they're different. So when you go to sit this wedge in there, make sure you have it facing the correct way. I've done that before too, not paying attention and then it's backwards. And then you've struck it with your mallet and you have that thing halfway in there and you're like, oh crap, it's facing the wrong way. I have the back facing the front. Um, so make sure, you know, like I said, just take the two extra seconds to make sure you have everything in there right. I'm gonna grab my rag. So put a little linseed oil on it if that's what you wanna do. If you wanna use wood glue, do that. So now we can go ahead and put this in place. So make sure our direction is correct, and it is. Center our wedge up in there. Let's start it. But you see I can start it down there a good amount. It's not too fat, it's not fighting me, and I sat it down a little bit. See where my mark's at? I set it down a good amount just by hand, okay? Now I'm gonna take my mallet. You could turn it upside down, hit the bottom of the handle. I don't like doing that. It's just something I don't do. Um, you can put this in a vise and hit it. You can, I sometimes put it on my lap and hit it this way if I'm sitting down, or you could just hit it like this. Um, you don't have to be a heathen about it and just freaking start whacking the heck out of it. You could go slow at first, cause see how thin it is down there? If I strike this crooked, it's gonna snap it doesn't matter how well you tuned it, it's going to snap that. It's super thin and you're hitting it with a hammer. Um, I advise using a hammer that's bigger than the surface area of the wedge. You could use a smaller one, but chances are if you hit, like let's say I hit back here, I'm gonna send a crack through the wedge and you know it's fine. You just have to hit it in two separate pieces now to get it all the way down. That's another thing I wanted to talk about is if the wedge does crack, like if you got to split down the middle, don't panic. It's just wood. It's just an ax, it's, it's don't overthink is what I'm saying. It, so now you're just dealing with two pieces, but you're still gonna send both those pieces down in. So I like to hold my ax in my hand, take my mallet, and I just give it a couple little taps to send it in. You can hear that pitch. So now it's starting to give me a little resistance. It's starting to fight me a little bit. So now I'm gonna give it a little more. And I'm pretty much, at my mark. Oh no, it cracked. Not a big deal, guys. Don't over don't overthink it. Don't sweat it. It's not a big deal. But you saw that I didn't have to be like a heathen about it. I got it all the way in there. We're seated all the way. I'm right at my pencil mark. I don't know if you could see, but my pencil mark, you could see the top of it. So now the wedge is in there, it's tight. You can see it filled the gaps perfectly. It's contoured correctly. So now there's one more step. Obviously, we're not gonna leave it all goofy like this. We're gonna cut the excess off and wait till you see the finished product. It, it pays to take the extra step and to do a nice job, guys, it really does. Um, so I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Like I said, we're gonna cut it off. And there's one more thing I wanna mention um, if you're using linseed oil. All right. Let's get this thing cut. Now I like to do a proud hang and what a proud hang is or what a proud hang means is I like to leave wood extending out of the top of the eye. Not this much, obviously, and not all that wedge there, but I don't cut it flush for two reasons. One, when it's mushroomed out past the width of the eye because we sent this wedge in there so our wood is mushroomed out a little bit um, it helps hold the head on because you have wood uh, swelled out past the width of the eye. Two, I don't like running my saw up against the ax because it scratches the hell out of it and then it looks like crap. So there's two reasons why not to do 
flush hen. So now I'm going to decide how much I want sticking out. And that's about right, right there. It's good enough for me. Man, that looks good. That was really good. Man, I'll let you guys see this. Actually, I'm going to put some oil on it first before I show it to you. Damn, boy. That looks sick. Ooh, this is some hot stuff right here. Guys, it pays to take your time and take some pride in your work. Look at that. Come on. You can't tell me that ain't some hot stuff right there. Follows the same shape. It's tight. Beautiful contrast with that red oak. And that looks damn good, guys. And look, remember the wedge cracked in the center? You can't even tell. You would have no idea if I didn't tell you. But man, that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of stuff you want to do, man. Just take a little extra time, but boy, is it worth it when it's done. That just looks absolutely gorgeous. Alrighty, guys. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I hope you guys like how it turned out as well. I think it's pretty sweet. And it just, just goes to show you guys, take a little extra time to tune up that wedge. It fits in there perfect. It doesn't fight you, it doesn't give you any issues. I guarantee it's tight, um, but obviously we'll test that out. But because I did not use wood glue and I used oil, I'll be able to extract this wedge and fix any issues I may have when I go test it out. And I almost forgot to mention this. I just remembered right now when I said test it out. So if you're not using wood glue, not using wood glue, and you're using linseed oil on your wedge, keep this in mind. It's super laid out, so I'm not gonna go use this ax, but let's just say I'm all fired up, I'm excited. Bang, I sink that wedge in there with my linseed oil, okay, your linseed oil, and then I go out and use this ax. You can bet your ass that this wedge is gonna back out, because this is oil, guys. I don't care how tight this wedge is. You sink this into wood a couple times, you're gonna be like, what the hell? Boop, 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 the wedge is gonna start backing out. It is, it's gonna back out. Leave this sit for a day or two before you use it. I know you're all fired up. You got this sexy looking wedge in there. You can't wait to go use this ax. Let the oil dry, okay? Let it fully dry and then go use the ax. It's happened to me on so many axes where I, I, th I think I have a bad hang or whatever, but really what it is is that oil is still wet. It's slippery with just the vibration and the motion of this sinking into wood. You're gonna you're gonna bump that wedge out a little bit. Sure, you could you could take your mallet and 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 seat it back down. Not a big deal, but um, try to take a chill pill and let it dry. Let it sit for two days. Let that oil really cure into the head, and then go use the axe. Because like I said, if that if I go out outside and I use this right now, you can guarantee that that wedge is gonna back out a, a little bit because it's 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 slippery. It's it's oil. So let it soak in, let it do its thing, wait a day or two, go use the ax, and uh, and you'll be loving life. You know what I mean? You won't have to ever think about it again until you know the head loosens up because you know, this is inherently a flawed design. You got wood on metal, so it is what it is. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you're able to learn something from today. I hope I didn't ramble on and carry on too much. I hope I'll, you were able to stay engaged and interested the whole time. And um, I'm really looking forward to see what you guys think. And uh, I, I wanna hear your guys' experiences. Let me know down in the comments, is this what you do? Do you tune your wedges? Or do you send them in square and just get out there? And you know, I know there's gonna be people that say like, oh, it's just a tool. I get that. I know, you can you can send it in square. It's gonna hold, it's gonna be fine. But you, you saw that I took a little extra time and it didn't fight me. And it looks good when it's done too. So uh, yeah. Like I said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Oh, and for those that are wondering, this is an ML Forge head. ML Forge is Marcus Leplin, I believe is how you say his name. He's from Latvia. He is the guy that forged the heads for Lamaca axes. Um, I recently got a hold of one of his heads. 
Um, no, I didn't buy it directly from him, but you know, that's a story for a different day. And this is hung on a Whiskey River NEC 28 inch hickory handle. And the ax is, the handle is finished in a walnut stain. And the walnut stain that I use is actually from Lamica. It's Appalachian black walnut stain. And you could see where I got the idea, obviously. Maybe you see a striking resemblance. So here's the Lamica light forest axe. Here's the Marcus Leplin head. You can see this says ML. And on this side, it says Lamica. This just says ML. But I really like the look of the polished bit on the, you know, the dark walnut handle. Anyway, I'm carrying on, guys. But you can see, look, Lamica even does it too. They, hey, they tune the wedge for the hang. So I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too drawn out and all over the place. But uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.